phenomenal. Frogum very confident, talking about he predicted all the picks and bans, uh, predicted the play style of SK Gaming. Picks and bans caught me a little off guard. I yeah. wasn't anticipating the Orianna ban. You know, so Chezzes has played it frequently in the past, but definitely a champion they didn't want to deal with. So I think it was more to take a comfort pick away from Jesus and also a very strong laner, especially if they wanted to play Yasuo here, take away the Orianna, don't want to deal with it. The weird thing for me was more the Nidalee ban from SK Gaming, especially because they have shown they can play the counters to it, so why do you actually take it away? And also here, in most cases, I mean, okay, sure, Alliance could have last picked Nidalee, but SK should have expected it, and I don't think they should have banned it. Yeah, so interesting picks and ban phase. Alliance put together a composition that had a lot of split push elements with both Jax and, and yeah. Yasuo, and when Froggen plays Yasuo, he does tend to play that split push role as well as the Assassin. The early game was all about Alliance. They had a great tower dive early on. They had complete dragon control, and there was absolutely nothing that SK could do to stop them. Also because SK Gaming have shown in the past, when they played against Fnatic, actually, where Fnatic had a pick comp, SK, they play very passive. They wait for the enemy team to make a move and try to then punish them for it and therefore win the game. This time around, Alliance didn't do too many mistakes in the early game, which meant all the picks they could actually get here got them ahead early on and they got all the objectives. Of course, even our very first replay, we can just pull it up on the screen, is actually where Alliance managed to get a pick here and therefore use it to get objectives. Yeah, so this particular clip, we can just roll this one straight out. Uh, it was really the start of Shook and Froggen grouping up and working together to find kills. The thing that I like about Froggen is he doesn't hesitate to use this last breath, instantly throwing himself onto Sven Skaren, and it was just well executed by Alliance. And even also, the fact that it predicts Svenskan actually to be here, because if you look down the bottom lane at the moment, there's a very big wave pushing up to the tower. So they expect the Svenskan to be there to try and dive onto whoever from Alliance was going to take this wave, and therefore they just move in, multiple members, find him, pick up a kill, pick up a second one, and take a dragon. The thing that was interesting about Alliance in this game is they did play fairly slowly, but yeah. they were always in control. It felt like every move they made was very calculated. And you did say there's not many mistakes. It is very difficult to find faults in Alliance's game plan. And one thing I really like about Alliance in this game here, you talked about how they had a comp that could pick up targets. They actually decided to build more for team fights because they got so far ahead. You saw Froggen, he built Banshee's Veil very early on. Instead of building Infinity Edge as the third item, Wicked as well. He didn't complete Trinity Force. He went Blade into tank simply on Jax here. So they put so much focus on being able to survive team fights because they were ahead. So when you build defensive items and you are already in front, it just becomes so hard for the other team to kill you and win fights. Well, talking about those team fights, the next big team fight that we want to highlight, if we can pull that up onto your screens, it was a match that, uh, battle that determined the second Baron of the game, if memory serves. Let's just roll this clip out. And even though Tabs goes a little ham, uh, maybe going a, a bit excited, it, it gets turned around very well by Alliance. Wicked goes low, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't really matter. So Nif, first of all, he doesn't have ult this fight. It's normally the ult they use to set it up. So Froggen has to do it by himself. Gets the knockable multiple members, goes in here. And from now on, because once again Froggen hits five members on his knockup, SK Gaming are, or, sorry, Alliance are just stronger in these fights. Again, look at the gold on the top of your screen. They're 10,000 gold ahead as well. And this isn't the first team fight that we've seen SK on the full retreat, scattering, like spreading to the wind, and just getting shut down and chased by the superior mobility of Alliance. It really felt like Alliance was doing everything right, and SK was really struggling to interrupt their game plan. They played too passive, in my opinion. They were waiting for Alliance to make moves, and when you have Lee Sin, when you have Yasuo, I mean, it's so easy to set them. Of course, Nif and Gragas as well. We had this roaming squad going around, finding picks here, and it simply meant Alliance, as you also said earlier, they got all the objectives. It was so easy for them to pick up Barons and Dragons. Well, very quick thought before we move on. Alliance very clearly moving away from the pack. SK are faltering in recent weeks. Should we be worried? I don't think so. Well, in case for SK, I still see them as one of the top teams in Europe because the teams under them at the moment, they have no issue surviving the early game and get to this mid-late game point where they are very strong. But when they play Alliance and when they're going to play even stronger teams, they have issues and they need to fix this early game. Well, we'll need to see if they can do that. We need to take a very quick break. And when we return, the Super Hot crew will take on the Copenhagen Wolves as the LCS action continues from Wembley Arena. Yeah.